Hi, I'm Dr. Gemma, and welcome back to Cognitive, the Knitting Psychology Podcast. Cheerfully and somewhat irregularly in business since 2008. Segments today may include what's on my hooks, needles, and spindles, a strategy, something I really like, put a lid on it, oh shoot, and blather. So sit back, put your feet up, pick up your knitting, crocheting, spinning, weaving, or dyeing, (laughs) or any other yarny thing you're doing, and get ready to enjoy. Well, hello there. It's Dr. Gemma, and welcome back to Cognitive. This is episode 135, and I love your comments, particularly now that we're doing all the Cognitive Fiber Retreat alias CFR updates. So your comments can land either on the blog, which is cognitivepodcast.blogspot.com, or on our group on Ravelry, I have some others top of the podcast information on the notes. The only thing that's really important there is do not send me money for a coffee unless you want to donate to the podcast. If you're paying for the Cognitive Fiber Retreat, please look in that section of the show notes. The email is there and it's at PayPal, not at coffee. But otherwise, don't worry about that top stuff. Let's just noodle right along the warm thanks department really it's everybody supporting cfr 2023 because i'm a little more scary (laughs) these days or at least i'm more easily scared so i really do appreciate the support i think we've got 21 or 22 people paid i should know better i do but that's on my excel spreadsheet which i'm not looking at right now so i'm not giving you the exact number and i haven't rolled down the notes far enough to see the number And that means let's just talk about CFR 2023, because really, why not? First off, if you're looking for updates on who's attending, who has paid, who's on the wait list, all that stuff, that is showing up in the show notes, as I've just told you, on the blog at cognitivepodcast.blogspot.com. Don't forget the K in cognitive. And also on our group on Ravelry. So if you need to keep up with this, look at the most recent show notes posted. If you're looking in Ravelry, you'll look under the replies of the most recent show notes posted because updating the actual show notes in Ravelry, I got to go in and do HTML and I don't feel like it. I think in the nice news, our own Loretta has come back. I have missed her and it's really nice. haven't talked to her in a while because we're kind of, eh, you know, a few miles apart from each other and I'm not spending a lot of my life up in her neck of the woods. I used to work up there and now I'm working more, quite a distance away, like an hour and 20 minutes drive from her, way, way over on the eastern end of a more southern valley. So that's why I'm not hearing much from Loretta. So it's really, really nice to have her show up. It also means the people up in her neck of the woods probably know about this, the fiber retreat, I mean. So that was all really good news. Welcome back, Loretta. Loretta was my good right hand for many, if not all of the years of the actual first eight CFRs by saying this. Let me tell you, she has done her duty. I'm not saying I expect her to be my right hand this time. I've had a lot of solid offers of help. So no, Loretta, please don't think I've got some goofy idea about you being obligated. If you want to help, you know you're always welcome because you're probably the most knowledgeable person standing about CFR after me. Nonetheless, we're really glad to have you back. And no matter what you're doing when you attend, as long as it's legal, we're thrilled you're back. In the meantime, let's get on to CFR stuff you need to know. The cost is still $35 per attendee who wants raffle tickets. We have one kid on the list who paid the attendance because she wants a raffle ticket. If you want a raffle ticket, you pay the attendance fee. Otherwise, if you bring your kids along, no, I'm not going to charge you. Of course not. We want them to learn how much fun it is to be in the fiber world. But at the same time, you know, you have to keep an eye on them and all that good stuff. I'm not putting them in there or charging them, but you know, there's a limit on the raffle tickets. Alrighty. Meanwhile, you're going to PayPal that to me. The email is in the show notes and this is not refundable. So 
once you send it to me, it isn't coming back, guys. You're donating to the Cognitive Fiber Retreat. I just want to spell that out. Now, I know this means a lot of people are going to say, well, I'm not going to pay till the very last minute because I don't know. I want the chance to change my mind. Fair enough. I haven't set it in my head yet, but I will set a closing date on that. And the reason is we have people on the wait list. And the wait listers, I know a few of them would pay right now, given the chance. If you're on the wait list, you don't pay me. You wait until I tell you you're on the main list. Realistically, we have a really good track record. I don't know if we've ever shut anybody out of a CFR. We've had some pretty lengthy wait lists. But, you know, stuff happens to people. And so I try to delay the final date when everybody on the main 50 list has to pay their 35. I'll try to delay it up to a reasonable point, but I also, you know, want to give the wait listers a chance to get in there too. <sighs> yeah, I know. I'm trying to make everybody happy, trying to give everybody the best chance to enjoy this. In the meantime, though, you do it's not refundable for a simple reason. There are fixed costs that I have to pay, including the cost of the venue and then the cost of my hotel room and the cost of incidentals, name tags, tickets for the raffle, that sort of thing, any other stuff. Excess of this, remember this is a not-for-profit. So the excess money goes into one of two places or both that we go back to the vendors and we buy more from them and raffle them. So your money comes back to you. Or the other one, depending on how it goes, we send a donation to Mother Bear. This reminds me to say what I always say. If you bring a completed Mother Bear bear, okay, to their specifications, not just any old bear that you have made, it has to be finished. You can't say, I'm going to finish it here at the fiber retreat. If you bring it, when you come in, when you show up and get your name tag and all that. If you bring a completed bear, you get a raffle ticket, one per bear. Okay, I need to think about it. I may also take donations from Mother Bear, which means that the bears and the donation go in a nice big box and get shipped off to Minnesota to Mother Bear. If you need information on Mother Bear, it is our charity for the podcast, always has been, Mother Bear Project. Oh gosh, I'm gonna get it wrong. It's, the link is in the show notes. I, I want to say motherbearproject.org, but actually I'm sitting here trying to find it in my show notes. But the link is in the show notes. You can go see it. Okay, having said that, the reason I'm not collecting bears is I don't think I'm going to have a lot of overage this year. So I'm not sure yet about how much excess we have. So that's why I'm not saying, hey, we'll collect the bears and we'll... Send them with a donation to Mother Bear like I've done in previous years. The mail's more expensive than it used to be. Blah, 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 blah. Let me see how we do on attendance and everything else. Those of you who were from our original eight CFRs will remember we didn't do the Mother Bear thing. We didn't start sending them off from the actual CFR with a donation and all that. I think we were probably at like year four or five before we did that because I had to know I had enough overage. The reason I had overage was other things going on, which I haven't talked about, like getting donations from people on Etsy and goodie bags and everything else. So, you know, I haven't worked all that out yet. I need a little time just to get past this phase of the venue and realizing we have enough to pay our basic costs. Short answer, it's been seven years since I did one of these. So I'm remembering it in small pieces. If you need the information on the hotel, that is the Courtyard by Marriott on Westinghouse Place in Valencia, California. The phone number is there. It's all in the show notes. And we have a special room rate from them. So you call them or we have a link in the show notes where you can link, you can click on the link and you'll see our group rate. And the group rate is 169 to 179, depending on the kind of room you get. It does not include breakfast. It does not include parking. I think parking is 10 bucks a night. I would also say when you get there, look around. There is an awful lot of parking in that parking area. So I don't know. It's out in the middle of a um, industrial business park, that sort of thing. So there is other parking up there. You know, park at your own risk. I'm just going to say that. In the meantime, they are giving us a discounted rate. Start date of the discounted rate is Tuesday, November 7th. And the end date is Wednesday, November 15th. The last day you can book is Wednesday, October 11th. That's all in the show notes. What I like about this is they're saying, hey, you want to take a week 
long break up in this nice area? You can. The question I keep getting asked, yes, we are very close to Magic Mountain, as in five minutes away. You're in the other direction. There's the Westfield Mall. Oh my gosh, there's so much stuff out there. Strip malls galore, any kind of food you can imagine. This is a really populous area compared to where we used to be up in the sticks of Tehachapi. So there we go. I think that's everything we've got. You can see the list of attendees so far. I have put a dollar sign and highlighted in red the people who have paid. Please go through the list and make sure you're in there if you should be and that you know your payment is noted. I do mark all the payments as they come in in my email. So I can always go back and check in the email to see, you know, if you think you paid me and it didn't come through, we have a way to check on that in PayPal as well. Uh, the vendors are there. We got our loan waitlister. We are on the waitlist. We will certainly take people for the waitlist. Like I said, we have a good history of getting people in from the waitlist. And if you're on the waitlist, do not pay me until I ask you to. You can see our list of vendors. We've got five so far. And we've got a lovely colorway by Dizzy Blonde. So far, the vote has been for the blue colorway. And I will I have to put a link in for her. I believe there is a link under resources for Dizzy Blonde. You can order it directly from her. She will not be attending. Let's see, let's see, let's see. By the way, in the finish this week, you can see one of her colorways in one of my finished projects. I also put in six different resources for mini skeins. Why? Because we're going to do the mini skein swap. It went over well the other times we did it, so I want to make sure you know about that. Remember, they should be 25 grams, about 100 yards. Not lace weight, please. Please do fingering weight, sock weight. We don't want to short each other. It's kind of a caveat emptor. We don't have any special tag you wear. You just carry your skeins around and let people know that you have skeins to swap if they'd like. But we want you to trade off about 100 yards, so about 25 grams. And then I have the six resources of patterns you can use for minis, but two of those links are actually two lists of patterns. Number three and number four, a comprehensive list of patterns to use with mini skeins, scraps, and yarn calendar sets. And then that's number three. Number four is what to do with dot, 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 is what to do with mini skeins. And then I keep locating these very nice patterns that I look at that and go, boy, that would go great in mini skeins. I have the Calm Cow in there as number two for crochet. Calm Cow is actually, I think, originally in a DK. So, you know, you'll have to alter it a bit. That's not exactly hard, is it, Crochet Sisters? No, it's not. The raffles I've talked about, Mother Bear. The goodie bags, not yet. Not yet. I haven't begun working on those yet. Typically, I hit vendors on Etsy and just ask them to send us, you know, minis. When they say minis, they mean like two yards just samples, color samples. They'll send coupons, things like that. So far, we're not there yet. And I would have to think about what the actual bags will be, or if there will be bags. There may just be dishes on a table at CFR with these piles of coupons and everybody just go take one. The coupons are usually time limited. That's great. Classes, no classes so far. If you would like to teach a class, let me know. We're in a smaller space than we've had before. We really had a good deal up in Tehachapi with that hotel, and we're never going to get it again. They've changed hands, blah, blah, blah. Also, I'm not driving to the back of beyond anymore. I'm happy doing it closer to home. But that's where we are, I think, on CFR. What is on my hooks and needles? This does include my sewing machine needle, but nothing there. I have finished the Dizzy Woodlands Country Cotton Shawl. Now, this is a mix of names. It looks to me like a pine forest, but this is a colorway from Dizzy Blondes, the lady who's got one colorway offered. By the way, vendors, if you want to offer a unique colorway for this and bring it with you, I am great with that. Nobody gets priority. We never say this is the unique special colorway for a CFR. That's not right. We don't want to do that. We don't want to give any vendor an advantage. We don't play those games. We don't like people being competitive or aggressive with each other. That's how you get thrown out. So we're not going to do that. Meanwhile, Dizzy Blondes, she said, I'll just make you a color. I'm sure why not. If people want to do that, that's great. And again, I have the patterns for minis that can be used for the, the vendor's yarns, whatever. All right, let me go back here and say, so that is a colorway from Dizzy Blondes. 
The colorway is called Slippery Slope. There is a link to my notes in Ravelry, and I'm sitting there wearing it. It's called the Country Cotton Shawl because that's the original pattern name. They don't even make Country Cotton anymore. This was Lion Brand. But it's such a great pattern for crocheting a triangular shawl. It really takes a skein of yarn a long distance, as you can see by that massive hulk of shawl I'm wearing. I also finished the Memorial Franken socks, the Memorial Day Franken socks, alias the Memorial Frankies. You know about the Memorial Frankies. These are the socks that happened when I had two skeins of sock yarn, and I said, gee, I should knit those guys. One was that incredibly beautiful orange red, and that was from Punta Yarns, and the other was the incredibly beautiful Tardis Blue from CJ Knits. So I had these two skeins that I should knit two skeins because I think I wore through at least two pairs of socks from my collection. So I thought I should replace those, what the heck. And some of my socks that I'm wearing all the time in the winter are looking eh, a little felted, a little meh. I know they're gonna go. So I said I'll make these two pairs of socks. And so of course I made the two pairs of socks and four pairs of Franken socks because you know that's actually kind of how that happens. So I have stopped myself on the sock yarn right now and on the Franken socks because I really wanted to finish some of my other projects, hence the shawl that I just finished. But the big achievement and the big thing that I finished that I'm really elated about is the Don't Know Yet, which has been renamed Blanket's Very Own Blanket because I, I never knew what to call that thing, as you could tell, calling it the Don't Know Yet for 17.9 months. And then I realized as I was finishing it, you can see the picture in the show notes, I was looking at one of my mementos of Blanket, which is a paw print the vet sent me of her. And I looked down and I realized blankets had laid on the don't know yet a lot. And there's some spots on it that need to be washed off. But anyway, one of them got onto my skirt. You can't see it well in the picture, but it looked like a tiny paw print. And I thought, good heavens, blankets is naming the blanket, which really makes kind of sense when you consider her name was blankets. Her name was blankets because my kid was three years old and he couldn't say any other words at the time, so he called everything Blankets, including the new dog that my husband suggested he name. There is a picture of Blankets shortly before her death lying on her blanket. So the Don't Know Yet is now officially finished, 18 months. It has been redubbed Blankets Own Blanket or Blankets Very Own Blanket because it's like this wonderful memorial of my dear friend of like almost 15 years. You can see a picture of it on the bed looking as twin set Jan pointed out rather Amish. It's the colors at the bottom, I think, that are setting her off. They're very Amish colors. And it's it's really beautiful. I went berserk. I put up all these pictures of it on my giant couch in the living room so you could see the whole pattern, how it looks on each side of the bed. I think the sweetest tribute was I put it on the bed. And you can see it's just a perfect fit for that queen. It's exactly, exactly what I want it to be. And my husband walked in there and looked at it. And he saw the dirt spots from blankets that I hadn't washed off yet. And he said, don't wash them off. Don't. It's a little bit of her. And so, yes, I haven't washed the blanket yet. I haven't washed blankets on blanket yet. And, you know, it's a giant crocheted project. That's 361 blocks, a block a day for virtually all of 2022. And I, I can't tell you how much I love it. It looks so much better assembled than it did just laid out and pinned together. That doesn't really give you the idea of what you get. I look at it and I see sunlight rippling across a lake into the marshes and the darker water at the edges. I don't care what you see. <laughs> I just love the thing. And it's it's just a one of a kind. And so I, I just am very, very happy that I have indeed finished Blanket's very own blanket. And so there it is. Whoo-wee! And then, you know, I sat down and I started working on my other projects and I looked at them and I actually went to the Lady Eleanor next. And the problem with the Lady Eleanor is I still have to think about it because I'm just getting back into the entrelac swing of things. So while I'm thinking about it, I needed something quick and easy, hence I was doing the Franken socks, so I could have some popcorn knitting. And no, the lane splitter isn't gonna be available for that because I have to relearn the lane splitter pattern before I do that. So I needed popcorn knitting, and actually I went back to popcorn crocheting. That is how that shawl got finished. 
So it's been a good week because I've finished three projects and that's nice. And now I'm back at the Lady Eleanor and I'm just, it was fun. I was working on it last night. It's just a lot of fun to get back to it. I have a picture of recent rows of it. It's a beautiful thing. You can see my favorite resources, which do include our vendors from the fiber retreat in there. Dizzy Blondes I'm not spinning yet. I say that because I saw one of the major spinning events is coming up. And I thought, that's really nice. Tour de Fleece is coming up. But I don't know if I'm going to get involved in that. I'm just happy. I've got enough to do right now. So this will take us on to a strategy. I've been talking about mindfulness a lot, which has been a lot of fun. And I had two interesting events this week with patients that brought up the idea of mindfulness and its very foundation is a belief that you are here in this moment. You are not trapped in your past and you are not predicting a negative future. Mindfulness is being in this moment. And people always think that's really easy to do when they haven't tried to practice mindfulness. They think, oh, I'm mindful. What are you talking about? I'm right here. And yet one of the things that gets you into psychotherapy is a sense that you can't recover from your past. And okay, so therapy is a perfectly great way to handle that, to learn that you can and to learn what you have to do so that you can recover from your past. But there is an interesting category, a person who comes to therapy who has adopted their trauma as their identity. And this is a very troubling thing because when you're working with it as a clinician, you have to be very careful. You're always teetering on that edge of presenting as somehow blaming a victim if they've been traumatized. When you're saying, I want to help you move past this, there is a sense in many people who have been victimized or traumatized that if they do move past it, they are somehow letting their perceived abuser, singular or plural, off the hook. And so I think one of the fundamental moments in mindfulness is recognizing that mindfulness and radical acceptance means you are not letting the other person off the hook. You are simply choosing to be more than your traumatization identity. And of course, the extreme of this is PTSD, where you're so much living in your trauma that you're having flashbacks to it. You're visiting it all the time. And it does take time to get yourself together to push back against that, that that is a brain change and you have to have time to push back. However, let's be honest, you can do EMDR, a protocol, eye movement desensitization and reprogramming. You can do that in 90 minutes and you can actually be past a trauma. So even so, I don't want to give you the impression if you have PTSD that it's going to take you months and months. No, good EMDR works pretty quickly. Where does it not work exactly in the place I'm talking about where you have decided who you are is your trauma? And it, this is very challenging. This is really a challenging thing. And when you're the patient, when you're the clinician on both sides, it's really hard. So, you know, I've had patients come in and say to me, I can never be fixed. Well, the reality is you can. The only reason you can't is an organic issue and we medicate those and the organic issues are basically psychosis where, yeah, there's actually a brain thing that we use chemicals to correct and bipolar where, yeah, there's a pathway, at least one in the body that we chemically correct because you can't do it by force of will. But even those people, Aaron Beck, who basically invented COGB, God rest his soul, he was treating them with COGB and getting good results. But he did recognize you do have to use the medication, that there are situations where it's completely organic. PTSD, while it can involve brain change, it's hard to say we can change you back. We can't make you what you were because we can't make anybody what they were. 
Even if you're perfectly healthy, you can't make your brain go backwards to a previous time in its life. So we can't make it go backwards, no matter what the issue is. But there is recovery, even if there is documentable brain change in PTSD. And so you don't have to be your trauma. And the interesting thing is, what does that even come into therapy? So, you know, I've had patients say, well, I've had this, but don't worry, because I can never get over this. And my question to you would be, why are you in my office? That if you can't get over it, if it's untreatable, okay, have a nice life, go, go live your life as it is. But the reality is you can recover. And part of the recovery is you being able to take responsibility for change, accepting that you're going to need to change stuff. And that's what therapy is, is I go to therapy to change. You don't go to therapy to change your partner or your kid. If you're in therapy, you're there so you can change. Now, the interesting thing there is you say, well, all right, so I go to therapy because I'm in a domestic violence situation. Yep, you're going to have to change. That in a good therapy there, you're going to work with the therapist on what you have to do to protect yourself and preserve yourself. You notice I'm not saying we're going to punish your abuser. It has happened. I mean, there have been situations where I've been the therapist where the abuser got reported, got arrested, blah, blah, blah. Sure, been around the block for 30 years. Of course, that's going to happen in my career somewhere. But even in the worst of situation, you are there for change, including let's suppose you have a psychotic disorder and you come to see me. We're going to talk about the part of your disorder that you can manage with your behavior. And that's the extreme. And I don't think anybody listening to me is in that place. But what I'm saying is all therapy is change. So a lot of times we'll have somebody go to a psychiatrist. They'll get Boku meds, you know, very serious thing. They still have a therapist that the therapist comes in and works with them on changes they can make in an extreme case. Like when I was interning with people who were actively psychotic, the change was you can take a bath every day. Yes, that really was the change. That is the hard end of the spectrum in my job where the change is you don't have to attack people. When you get nervous, you take yourself to a quiet place and you get yourself safe. So, you know, that's the very extreme end, but I wouldn't expect people listening to me here to be working there. But what I'm saying is if you are talking to me or someone like me, someone who does not prescribe meds, the idea is you're there to change. And that means that you cannot say, well, this is who I am now with your trauma. And most people don't. I mean, the good news is most people come in, particularly with PTSD. And the first thing they say is, I just want to forget this. I don't want this to define me. I want to get past this. So, you know, most people do have the right idea, but if you go too long without getting treatment, there is a much higher risk that trauma does become an identity. And so, you know, we get into harder situations, people who've been uh, in the military for a long, long time, and they've said, I'm okay. And maybe they are as long as they're in an active duty unit and they have all this support and camaraderie with people going through what they're going through. But they come home and they don't handle the, the changes that may have happened to them while they were on active duty. And so again, you can get this point where they just think I have to be this to be a soldier. And maybe they're still on duty, but they're just not actively in the field. And they think they have to stay this way. They think they can't get help. So, you know, the ultimate mindfulness that has popped up like at least three times for me this week in treatment with pretty healthy people is this idea that what you're going to do in therapy is you are not going to say your identity is based on your trauma. So actually, what are you doing with your trauma? This isn't, hey, hi, I'm Dr. Gemma. Just get over it. Why don't you? That's not what we're doing. What we're talking about is you can integrate your trauma. It becomes a part of your history. You can talk about, if you want to, that bad thing that happened to you. On the other hand, you cannot talk about it. I don't mean suppress it. I mean lose interest in it. Because as you move past it, it is no longer defining you. When I treated kids, this is huge because kids really have so little power over their lives. So they often are acting out any kind of trauma they've had. 
and they really don't have resources not to. Even me, they only get me one hour a week. The rest of the time, they may be with people who are traumatizing to be around. But one of the joys of that is as you mature, as you grow older, you get to look back on that and say, I am so glad that's over. That is not who I am, and I'm not going to make that who I am. I'm going to recover and have a good life. And eventually, in a healthy response, you're losing interest. That if you need to talk about it, you can talk about the trauma. But if you don't need to, you're not thinking about it secretly and suppressing it. You actually do lose interest. That is integration. And that is the end point of any kind of therapy, including psychiatric treatment and medication for trauma. So, I mean, the ultimate base of mindfulness, if you come to therapy, but also when you're working on yourself, is this idea of, I am not defined by my trauma. I do not have to be defined by my trauma. The simple way of putting this, I always say to my patients, they say to me, I can never get over this. And I say, you are in charge of your own head. So if you are saying you can't get over this, you can't because you are determining you can't. But you could change that by saying, I can get over this. I don't know how right now, but I can and I will get over this. So that is the real foundation of both mindfulness and radical acceptance. And of course, if you look at the ACT therapy hexagon, you know, acceptance and commitment therapy, that is a lot of that. But it is basically self as context. I move from situation to situation. I'm not that person who was a victim, you know, years ago. I'm now this other person I have moved on that is simply in my past. And you can hear the rest of the act qualities in there. Like you can hear, how did I do that? I used committed action. How did I do that? I diffused my thoughts. I didn't get rigid thinking. How did I do that? I simply accepted that I have these experiences and I'm moving past them. And the other thing is, well, I have values that I say, I have the ability to move on. I have the belief that I'm going to get through life in the most positive way. So that's the act hexagon as well as I'm living in this present, not in my past. Okay. And when you adopt trauma as your identity, that's the ultimate inflexibility. You are very stuck and you'll hear that in therapy all the time. This person's really stuck. Or if you're, if you're a therapist, you hear another therapist say, oh, I'm so stuck working with this patient, which is therapy speak for the patient's really stuck too. <laughs> On to the fluffy books. I finished The Secret Service of Tea and Treason by India Holton. This is the third book in, the, I think it's called The Dangerous Damsels Trilogy. I cannot recommend these books enough. I actually started following her and her blog and on Instagram, she states that she is on the autism spectrum and she consciously designed some of her characters to be on the spectrum. I really didn't notice it as much until we got to Tea and Treason. There is one character who is delightfully concrete. She's completely effective in everything she does, but she is puzzled when people are using idioms and figures of speech. I just loved it. I just loved it. I really recommend these books. She's writing another book. Sounds like steampunk and ornithology. I can't wait for that one. And she has a sample of it at the back of Tea and Treason. I can't recommend it enough. Netflix, uh, you know, I keep saying I'm binging Seinfeld. I got a little bored of it. I haven't been back in a while. Let me get on instead to something I really like, which is Lady Grey Tea. And this is also part of put a lid on it, to be honest. So I'm still doing the tea tastings. And I gave in for six bucks. Plum Deluxe had, I think it was 10 little cellophane sampler bags of different Earl Greys. I think they declared May or June Earl Grey month. And I fought it. I fought it so much, but I love Earl Grey. And so I finally bought the samplers. And I have to tell you, I tried one herbal and I, it was so forgettable, I forgot it. But man... Lady Grey. Now this is their house Earl Grey. This is it. I don't think they've got something called Earl Grey. 
they have a lot of other things with Gray in the name or Earl in the name, I think, but I don't think they actually call anything Earl Gray. So this is their answer to Earl Gray. And let me tell you, this thing is terrific. This is, and you can see the ingredients, black tea, orange peel, lemon peel, blue corn flowers, which are pretty. I don't know if they give anything to the flavor, but they sure make the tea look beautiful. You can see some in the picture if you really look hard. And then bergamot oil, which is, of course, that's what Earl Grey is. Bergamot oil mixed with black tea and vanilla essence. Holy manoli. This is great. I only drank it hot because I only had that little bag. And I'm not going to put it into iced tea. I like my iced teas more herbal. Also, I use my iced tea to use up any leftovers from the year that I was not fond of hot. So I go through my herbals. I go through old tea bags. I'll be going through a lot of the Harneys that I wasn't that big on. Oh my gosh. I will probably never get to try the Lady Grey as a cold tea because I'm so in love with it. This stuff is smashing. So the goal of all these tea tastings, you know, has been to find what my house teas are going to be. And it's really coming down to another company, Dilma, who makes a terrific, very bright, strong, fierce Ceylon that I just love. And I think Dilma's based in Singapore or something. Whammo! Those are good teas. So I think the house tea, the black tea, is just the Dilma Ceylon. But I also think it's going to be the Lady Grey from Plum Deluxe. In terms of the herbals, I'm a little more varying there, but I have to say from Plum Deluxe, the winners have been clearly across all the herbal categories have been two Plum Deluxe teas. One is the herbal Healthy, Wealthy, and Wise, which it is just fizzy, lemony, and bright. I, I just, it tastes like summer and it smells great. But the other one is the Pear and Cinnamon, which I'm a pear freak and I've never found a tea that captured pear. And somehow the pear and cinnamon is doing it. And I haven't, I don't think I've tried it hot because I had only a small sample of it. And I don't need it hot. I can't imagine a hot pear tea. But if I want a decaf hot tea in the winter, we will find out. But anyway, today's something I really like is the just wonderful Lady Grey from Plum Deluxe. What a delicious, delicious thing. In the blather, well, Captain and Queenie look so unloved. They're moth-eaten. They need grooming. And we can't get an appointment at our good groomer until July, so they just look horrible. The hubs date, we did have Father's Day. You can see a picture of the two significant fathers in my life. One is my own father. He's on the right in a very dated picture. It's a very him kind of picture. Glass of wine in one hand, cigar in the other, looking mellow. That's him. But the more adorable one on the left is me and my boys and we had a lovely lovely father's day which makes no sense because we just went out to a nice lunch at bj's and it was very nice it was insanely nice in fact they have a tri-tip wedge salad which is a hunk of tri-tip roasted to a turn get it medium rare i'm not kidding you on a hunk of iceberg lettuce and then they put a kind of barbecue sauce, a little bit on a chimichurri sauce, they call it, and blue cheese and bacon. This thing was sensational. I've always loved it. Anyway, I've been eating the, that salad for years at BJ's on the rare occasions I get to one. Then we went to Walmart and then we went to Starbucks and had a family meeting. And it was all really, really good. Kind of laid out our summer outline. So it's just a really delightful Father's Day. What can I tell you? And Gloria is still mentioned in the show notes, our pet morning glory. I did the offshoots in water. They're not looking good because it got cold and then it got warm and they just didn't like all that. So I have to go researching about how to start new morning glory shoots because Gloria is going crazy on that windowsill and we got a lot of places she could go to work for us. Meanwhile, on the calendar, the cognitive fiber retreat you remember that, don't you? <laughs> From like 10 minutes ago? Yes, that is Saturday, November 11th. All the news that's fit to print is in the show notes and the updates. The updates are coming out on Facebook and Instagram and also in the show notes of the most recent posted episodes on Ravelry and the blog, as I have now said about 30 times in this episode. But you'll be glad to know I'm also going to the Evolution of Psychotherapy Conference in Anaheim, December 12th to 17th. 
I'm waiting for them to put up their schedule. I do have hotel rooms there, but we just have to see how that goes. But it will be a nice break for me just to take the train down to Anaheim. And if I don't like their schedule one day, I'll be seeing patients that day. Kalu Kalei gets me through a lot of my continuing ed units. Meanwhile, Minerva gets the last word. There she is giving her I knew it all along expression because I was so worried we weren't going to get 50 people for the cognitive fiber retreat to sign up and we're on the wait list. So Minerva is sitting there looking into the camera telling you that she knew it all along. I'm sort of doing a face palm in the background because, you know, why do I even question that the cat is always right? In the meantime, nobody has asked me about health and safety precautions at the courtyard by Marriott, because there aren't any right now. If anybody is wondering, we're down in LA County, everything is good. Keep in mind that we'll be in November, so you know things may change, keep some masks on hand, you know. Please get all your shots and stuff, please don't come unvaxxed to the fiber retreat. We're not checking or anything like that, but I can't guarantee who will be at that point if we have another winter of the plague. But that's really all I need to say about COVID because I know sooner or later that's coming up. But in the meantime, everybody, you know the drill, but pretty basically everybody stay safe, take care of each other, and I will talk to you soon. Bye-bye. So we have come to the end of another episode of Cognitive. Please do not use this podcast to diagnose yourself. If you think you are having a mental health problem, please contact a licensed mental health professional. Show notes for these episodes can be found at cognitivepodcast, all one word, dot blogspot.com. Episodes can be found at iTunes under the name Cognitive Podcast, but also can be found posted next to the show notes on the Blogspot page. Thank you so much for listening. Everybody stay safe, take care of each other, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.